she has this phenomenal, phenomenal solo show called Tar Baby, and I'm so, so thrilled to have her back. Please give it up for Desiree Birch. So picture it, it's New York City, 2004. It's a hot, sweaty day. Everyone hates each other and everyone's broke. I know, use your imaginations. It's so hard to access. Um, and I am on my way to an audition. You know, I'm 25 years old. I'm a little go-getter actress. And I'm auditioning to be in my uh, second NYU student film. Yeah. It's a webisode. Yeah, it's basically something that a bunch of college kids younger than I am came up with while they were getting stoned on a twin bed. Um, and the character's name I'm auditioning for is Laquanvia. Yeah, because all black names are made of those 10-point Scrabble letters you don't know what the fuck to do with. And uh, she is going to be the comic relief while the very white protagonists struggle with their very white problems. Um, her character description will likely involve a civil service position and definitely involve the word sassy. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is sassy? That's something you call a bratty child or a cat. Um, so anyway, I walk into the audition, right? And there's a row of, of hipsters sitting behind a fold-out table. There's like way too many hipsters there that are auditioning for this film. They all shake my hand. They tell me, you know, they're really excited to have me there. They've read my resume. They've heard about me. You know, and one of them's like, okay, whenever you're ready, go with the line, right? So I'm like, okay. <sighs> Hold the elevator! See. <laughs> Yes, that is pretty much half of what I'm gonna be saying in this fucking webisode if I get this part, right? So I say the line, right? And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, Desiree, that was great, you know? Um, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't hold the elevator, but it was something equally banal, right? And then, you know, he says, that was great, you know? Um, you know, but then he gives me some direction. It's like, what the fuck are you gonna direct? It's hold the elevator. I say it and I leave, right? But he's like, oh yeah, you know, come on. I need, I need it to be, you know, more cupcakes and razor blades. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, you're, you're, you're giving me a lot of no November, I really need more October. I'm like, yeah, totally got it. Okay, great. <sighs> Hold the elevator! And then he's like, yeah, more, more. I'm like, Hold the elevator! Hold the elevator. I'm like, hey, you guys, I asked you to hold the elevator. Why can't you heal me? Like, I'm doing anything that this guy's asking me to. And it's crazy, right? You know? And then finally, like, the main hipster, the one with the facial hair made of irony, he, um, <laughs> he, he gives me the actual piece of direction, you know, the one that they'd all been wanting to give me since I walked in the room. He's like, yeah, could you do it a little bit more um, urban? Oh. Right? Ah, uh -huh, you guys are smart, right? So I was like, okay, totally got it. And they're like, hold the fucking elevator, forget about it. Ah. Ah, you know? And he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, could you do it more street? You know? And I was like, okay. Uh. Do it like the clumps. Okay, wait a second. None of the things that the guy's saying actually go together, right? You know, like, does he want me to do it like, you know, I got like fucking, you know, tiger paws tattooed on my titties and I'm selling drugs? Or like, does he want me to do it like I live in a Lower East Side tenement with a hundred different people from a thousand different countries? Or does he want me to do it like I'm in an Eddie Murphy, like, knockoff, you know, where everyone's sitting around the table eating chicken fried steak and chicken fried chicken and chicken fingers and their own fingers because they're too obese to move. <laughs> but then I get it, you know, like they all do mean the same thing. They mean black to someone who has no idea what that means. He means do it more black because you're not being black enough. And then there's this exchange look of, you know, and me going, yeah, uh, yeah, totally, I got it, yeah. <laughs> black it up, <laughs> okay. I say it, I say it. Hold that elevator. Motherfucker, I done told y'all to hold that motherfucking elevator. Brat, brat, brat. Bitch, I don't know why you ain't hold that elevator like I asked you to. Here, hold my baby. I'm a cutter, bitch. Hold the elevator, Jesus. Hold the elevator, Jesus. Miss Scarlett, I don't know nothing about holding no elevator. 
get on up on the elevator, 11th floor on the elevator, hold the elevator. Oh, look, oh, hold the elevator. Would you hold a jello pudding pop with the elevator while I rape you all in your sleep skin? <laughs> little editorializing on the last one, but uh, anyway. So I've clearly now filled an elevator full of one-dimensional black people, um, one of whom's raping everybody up in there. <laughs> and they love it, and they love it. They're like crying and vomiting with laughter. Like they love it. They're like, oh my God, Desiree, you're so great. Thank you, we're definitely gonna call you. And I'm just walking out of there like, motherfucker, I know you're gonna call me. Like, I just did all the shit. Like, I know what the shit is. I know exactly what you asked for when you asked for it. Like, every person of color knows exactly what the fuck you think of them. You know, it's just like when I walk down the street and guys cat call me and then they go, hey, you got kids? Do you know? And I'm like, fuck, can I be a black woman over 14 and not have like a train car full of kids? <laughs> Like, cause that's exactly the stereotype is what it is. Like, I know what my look is. Like, I know, like, I look like I have a subway car full of kids from like a million different daddies. It looks like a baby UN meeting, you know, of different people of the fucking rainbow. And they're all like drinking grape soda and eating Doritos, you know, poking each other's eyes out with chicken bones, you know? And I'm like, you know, giving them suck on my pendulous Negro titty, singing them a spiritual, you know? Soon the world be done with the troubles of the world. Like, I know what my stereotype is, dude. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not the fucking, this is my, not my first time at the rodeo, all right? Like, I went to fucking drama school, classically trained in all that fucking crap. Like, I went through high school drama, and that's where I actually learned how to do this, because as I'm walking out, I'm thinking about the fact, like, the day that I learned how to do this. And it was because of my high school friend, Steve, um, and he was, like, the class clown in theater class. Like, I'd finally discovered the theater, and I, like, felt like I had a place, even though I would only get cast as, like, the narrative who never interacts with any people or has relationships or like the matron who's like quirky and then evaporates, you know? Like you're always just like mystical ghost walking on stage and then saying something meaningful and then leaving. You know, it was great, it was fine. Like I was used to it, it was nice, you know? Um, and my friend Steve, he was like the class clown and he was one of these guys who like would find the laugh button in a social situation and then just keep pushing it over and over. Like the one thing he could say to make everyone laugh and when they did it, he was like, I'm a fucking terrorist, ha ha ha. <laughs> laugh, 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 right? So like he would do this with like phrases and shit all the time and then one day he discovered my button and uh, his game with me was that he would say something like moderately racist, like not even that racist because he would knew he would get a reaction out of me that would be like the most racist thing anybody had ever heard because I would just like lash out. Like he would throw the bait and I would always take it, you know? So he would say some stupid, sh like, you know, the scene in theater would say fade to black and he's like, Desiree, we need you on stage, you know? And I'd be like, oh, you know? And I'd come on like that or something something. But yeah, so like this one day he was like, hey Des, I'm having a party on Saturday. Don't worry. There's going to be plenty of fried chicken and watermelon, you know, right? And then I just like bust out and I'm like, oh shit, Steve, really? They're going to be fried chicken and watermelon? That's so good because you know how black people love fried chicken and watermelon almost as much as we like crack, Steve. That's right. My daddy, Colonel Sanders, raped my mama and your mama, so I love some chicken and waffles. Mm, I'm going to do a tap dance for your party, Steve, because you know how, how white people can dance you know they always like don't tell my heart my achy breaky heart and black people dance like this Right, you know, I'm gonna show up with my boombox on one shoulder and my illegitimate child on the other. Happy birthday, fuck face. And I would just, I got like so angry. I was just like the most angry I'd ever been. And it was this amazing moment where I, I, I realized that everyone was looking at me and again, they were just crying with laughter. Do you know what I mean? It was like, I had the most power that I ever had in my social life as a teenager at that moment. Like everyone was just riveted by me and I hated myself at the same time. Um, I mean, I hated Steve more because like he was the one who was doing this shit and he knew he could. He knew that he had like, I was going to have to res respond if he said something. And then I always would. And no matter what I would say, it was like, everyone was l was hearing what I was saying, but nobody was listening to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone's like, that's so hilarious. But meanwhile, I'm kind of like dying on the inside and I'm like, don't you see how fucking fake this is? And everyone's just like, this is great. It was like I was on fire and nobody else could see me, you know? And I was just like screaming in rage and everyone's like, more, more, more. So like, when I walked out of this audition, I was like, I fucking know I got this, you know? And then I like waited for the call 
And then I waited for the call, and then I got really pissed off two days later when I didn't get a part in this guy's shitty fucking webisode. Do you know, like, there had just been space for me to show up and, like, do the thing, and the thing was done, and, like, I had whored myself out, and now I wasn't gonna get fucking paid. And I was just, you know, and, like, actors always do this. They beat themselves up over, you know, like, oh, I didn't do this, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I mean, honestly, I probably didn't match the suit of the guy who was gonna be in the other scene or something. Like, that's why they didn't hire me. It's, like, always some kind of, like, oh, well, you need to do this and whatever. He rarely has anything to do with you, but inside I was just kind of like, I don't understand. Like, I did this terrible fucking thing, and I know I did it accurately, right? And I was like, did somebody else hate themselves better than I did? I was kind of like, well, if you're going into something hating yourself, you're probably not going to, like, get anything good from it. And um, I thought about this just recently with a whole sort of, like, Rachel Dolezal thing exploded. It was like, oh, shit, Rachel Dolezal. Like, black people fucking exploded. Like, half of us were just like, oh, I'm cultural appropriator. And the other half was like, I don't know, she seems kind of cool. Like, I trade her for Stacey Dash, you know? Like, so, <laughs> seriously, right? Like, it was totally up in the air. But it was interesting because it was like all of this sort of like, she doesn't know our suffering, you know? Like, she doesn't know our pain fully. She's taking over the look of something without knowing our suffering. And it's kind of like, is that what identity is? Is it suffering? You know, like what is it? Is it skin that makes people black? Is it is it suffering? Is it a good weave and a bad attitude? Like what is the black combination that like you need to be official? You know, and I just kind of thought to myself like how sad because I know that I've spent a lot of time defining my own identity based on how hard I've suffered, and I remember that moment in which I was suffering so greatly, and I felt so completely far away from myself, and then I thought, well, it's got to be something else, and I think that and this is just a theory I'm working out, that like really your identity is really not so much about the like Venn diagram things of intersectionality that trap you and sort of, you know, contort your body, but it's the fact that someone's gotta take you seriously. There's like one person on this earth and it's you that's gotta take you seriously every time and has gotta commit to actually saying who you are and representing who you are to the world. And that's, that's even true when I like correct my mom's grammar and she says things like, oh, that's so white of you. You know, like without any sense of malice, you know, but that's just the way that she defines me saying that the word is similar and not simular or something like that. Um, and the thing is like, I kind of feel like the identity is really just a commitment to going like, yeah, I don't dance really well and I have a flat ass and I'm still black and I'm even more than that, I'm actually me and I correct people on grammar and I'm a little bit anxious and I do really like gangster rap music very loud and it's a bunch of contradiction, but I'm committed to representing that person to everyone else and not kind of a, you know, hiding behind what everyone's wanting to hear and that may mean that nobody holds the elevator for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> or no no one even laughs, but that's, that's okay. I, I'm a big girl and I can, I can take the stairs. Um, okay, you guys are lovely. Thank you so much. Have a good night.